to uh, an inverted position or a reverse sit. Legs are in front, knees are bent, hands are coming down to the side of our hips. If you find that you got a longer uh, torso than you do arms and it's hard to reach the floor, it's okay for your hands to come back a little bit. However, I want to try to keep our hands as close to the hips as possible. I don't want to get super far lean back here. I want to try to maintain as much uh, of a straight up and down spine as possible. Position of the fingers can be forward, out to the side, or back, whatever is comfortable. I tend to go straight out to the side. I kind of like playing with different positions at different times on this. Grounding through the floor, I want to come back to our elbow spirals. Let those spiral, elbows spiral outward, and then allowing them to spiral inward. As you're spiraling out, we're inhaling into that belly space, filling up our crocodile breath. And as we exhale, drawing navel into spine as the elbows spiral in. Notice how there's a, that same connection is taking place between the palm and the shoulder blade based on the spiraling of our elbows. As the elbows are spiraling out, shoulder blades are rolling down and packing down the back getting down, moving down on our rib cage. Chest is opening up and lifting up towards the ceiling. As we exhale internally spiral, that releases the shoulders and they start to round up over the top of the rib cage. I also wanna add in our scoop so that we're getting that pelvic scoop from our exhale so that we get this nice rounded low back and upper back together. Inhale as you spiral elbows out. Start to move into that nice opening of the chest. Can you feel some stretch across the chest? Can you feel your shoulder blades really engaging down into the palms of your hands as you press into the floor? And can you feel that nice softening rounding? Can you get a decent little stretch through both the low back and between the shoulder blades as you exhale and scoop On the next one, as you inhale, spiraling elbows out, getting nice and tall, I wanna stay in this position. Open chest, elbows spiraled out. We can now change the position of our feet if you wanna cross them or if you wanna let them go straight as long as we're maintaining this downward press, open chest. I wanna stay real engaged through the shoulders uh, as we get into some neck mobility work. So with it from this position, part of the reason I want to keep the shoulders depressed and active is I don't want the shoulders to shrug up as we're getting into our neck work because that kind of takes away from our neck mobility. So active shoulders kind of free up our neck so that we can get in some good neck work. Staying nice and open through the chest and as tall as you can through the back of the head up to the ceiling on a nice tall spine. We're going to start with just simply checking our blind spots, looking over your right shoulder as we exhale, squeezing slowly into it on that exhale, inhaling into our crocodile breath back to center, and then exhale to the other side. I want to keep this movement slow with, a full, with each full breath cycle. I don't want to move into this quickly. As you're reaching, I want to reach more from the chin than from the forehead. Forehead tends to cause the head to tilt as we're reaching and we lose our tall spine. So I want to keep that tall spine, reach that chin to see how far can you get your chin to line up to the edge of your shoulder. Inhale to the middle, exhale as you reach. Notice, can you get your chin as far over the right shoulder as you can on your left shoulder. More than likely, there's going to be a little bit of an imbalance that's fairly normal. I wanna get sensitive to that imbalance. There's going to be some differences in tightness and restriction of the neck based on how you move to the right compared to how you move to the left. If you can see the difference 
on how far you can get your chin, can you feel the difference in tension and stretch taking place within the neck region? Outside of just noticing it for right now, that's all I want to do with that information is just have an awareness of it. We'll come back to center. Now we're going to get into our light kind of windshield wipers. Lightly dropping one ear towards the shoulder. I'm not trying to touch my shoulder. It's just a light drop. And then opposite ear, I'm lifting that ear up like I'm trying to reach to the ceiling, seeing if we can get some nice traction through the side of the neck. And then bringing it back to center, dropping the other ear and reaching ear up to ceiling. Want to inhale as we come to center and exhale as we reach up and away. This is a good one to kind of come back and re-engage through the palms as well, especially as you lift Press down through the palms, feel the shoulder blades drive down as you're lifting that ear up. Again, I want to stay light and juicy in this. I don't want this to be massive as a stretch. I definitely don't want this to be painful. I want to be extra sensitive around movement of the neck. And again, let's come back to noticing that differences in one side compared to the other. How is this, what, where is it tight and restricted? Do you feel one side moves a little bit better than the other side? These are actually really good movements to do in front of a mirror so that you can visually see the differences between one side and the other, because that will help de uh, develop that nature of sensitivity so that you can feel where the tightness is actually taking place within the body. come back to our starting and now we're going to get into some glides allowing the head to slide side to side reaching the cheek across like you're trying to reach out to your shoulder and then going back to the other side again I want to reach from that cheekbone and maybe a little bit from that chin because I want to avoid that tilt of the head and I want to watch out for rotation turning the head towards I want to keep the head straight as we're gliding side to side. Again, keeping those shoulders packed down and back so that the shoulders are active, uh, actively pressed down as we're moving side to side. And slowly squeeze into it on that exhale. Inhale as you come back, exhale as you slowly squeeze. Again, this one's a great one to do in front of a mirror so that you can see how well do I move from one side compared to the other. Any kind of imbalances on these movements tends to be a pretty significant issue or deal because it's going to affect other areas of the body as well. And I want to add another, actually we'll, we'll combine this, we're going to do some forward glides now. So I'm turning to the side, we're still pressed down through the shoulders. Now we're reaching forward with the chin, seeing how far can you reach your chin out, and then pulling the chin back, sliding as far back as you can. Tucking that chin in deep, and then reaching straight out. I don't want to tilt the head. I'm not extending my head up towards the ceiling. I'm reaching the chin straight forward. Same thing on the pulling back. I don't want to drop my chin to the chest. I'm simply tucking that chin, pulling it in as deep as I can comfortably, and then gliding straight out. Inhale as you pull, exhale as you reach. And then I want to combine those two, our side to side glide and our forward and backward side, and I want to turn that into a circle. So we can start by reaching that chin straight out to the side and then reaching our ear or our, our cheekbone across and then pulling our chin in, going back across to the other side and then reaching out and forward, making a nice circular pattern with our glide. Inhale as you pull back, exhale as you reach that chin out. Notice any uh, 
crackly, any crunchiness, any, uh, you know, um, definitely want to pay attention to pain. If you're feeling any kind of discomfort with this, then I want you to back off, make the movement smaller, keep it comfortable and not painful. After about five to 10, we're going to reverse directions, going the opposite direction, keeping it nice and smooth and small and non painful. And again, notice if it's more difficult to move in one direction of your circle compared to the other direction. I'm having a little bit more difficulty moving across to the right side. That was not there when I was going the other direction. And the last one we're going to do are some shallow neck rolls. And so by shallow, I want to stay small. I don't want to get real deep. We're going to start by simply allowing the chin to come down to the chest, like we're looking down to the floor. Then we're going to move our ear to the shoulder and then allow our gaze to come up to the ceiling and then opposite ear to the opposite shoulder and chin back down to chest. So we got four points of contact or four points that we're moving to that makes a square. I want to keep moving through them and slowly smooth it out to make it more of a circle. Again, I want to stay shallow with this because um, I don't I want to avoid pain and I want to really notice the areas in which my shoulders want to get engaged. So let's re engage our shoulders pressing through the palms elbows are spiraled out lifting up through the chest. You may notice that that creates even more tightness and tension in the neck itself. So keep that roll nice and shallow. Notice where the tension is greater. Is it on the right side of the neck or is it on the left side of the neck? And then we're going to reverse directions. As we reverse directions, we're coming back to shallow again. I don't want to go from the depth that we were just at. And we're going to start with our four points. Chin to chest, shallow ear to shoulder, eyes come up to the ceiling, and then ear to the opposite shoulder, chin to chest. And then from there, we're slowly going to smooth those four points into a circle and slowly get a little deeper on our roll as long as it does not get to levels of intense or pain. And again, notice where it feels uh, more tension, more stretch. And I also want to pay attention to any of that like crackly or clunky nature. I want to stay as smooth as possible. If you have some crackly on this, as long as it is not painful, I want to go through it softly, slowly, smoothly. And I want to think about kind of we're de-crackling the crackle. Yep.